Coal Board's programme calls for 20,000 new houses for miners throughout the country. In the West Midlands alone, nearly 5,000 are going up, and they're going up fast, to rationalise systems of buildings such as this, where factory-made units are swung into place in double-quick time. At 97 Coppice Drive, Dorden, near Atherston, there was a brief ceremony the other day to hand over the key to 29-year-old miner P.J. Gallagher and his family on the completion of an estate of 234 houses. While tea was served in a neighbouring marquee, the Gallagher's furniture was shifted in with clockwork precision. After the opening ceremonies, the Gallagher's were left to settle in. Patrick and Jean, the children, will find Warwickshire a change from their native Lancashire. For the first time, the miners of the Midlands came together for their own gala in Tamworth. The weather may have been unkind, but miners and their families flocked in their thousands to the old castle town to take part in the celebrations organised by their own folk for their own folk. The Bishop of Lichfield conducted the dedication service in the shadow of the castle wall. The coal queen, Alice Bowen, 16-year-old daughter of Hampstead ambulanceman John Bowen, was crowned in ceremony after her triumphal ride. Now it's the turn of Arthur Horner, NUM General Secretary, to tell the miners that 20 million tonnes would have to be in stock by next winter if the country was to keep economically solvent. But, said he, there must be still further drastic improvements in the miners' working and living conditions. The Right Honourable James Griffiths, one-time miner and now Privy Councillor, spoke as well. At the baby show, seven-month-old Gillian Green took the top prize. There, miners' wives took pride of place. But the men were not forgotten. The sporting events gave them a chance to show what they were made of. But once again, the women folk had their opportunity of a double act. With evening drawing on, the fun fair became the centre of attraction for the damp but undaunted crowds who had watched the darts and bowling championships, the swimming contests and listened to the male voice choirs. The rides and the sideshows made a fitting end to the Midland Miners' own Day of Days. pace with the rising demand, more and more machines are needed in British mines that will load coal at the same time as cut it. Here at Pleen Colliery in Scotland, scraper boxes are doing both jobs in one. Here's how a scraper box works. Fix a knife blade to a box, pull it along the coal face and see how it peels off the coal. Hinge the back of the box to swing one way only and the cut coal will be drawn along in one direction, but the box will ride over the coal on the back stroke. Put another knife in at the other end of the box, and the return stroke will cut coal as well. Now we have a tool that cuts coal both ways and loads it in one direction. Put several scraper boxes in the coal face, and they will cut and shift coal from one to the other, and so away to be loaded. A 250 horsepower winch is used to drag the boxes up and down the face. At Pleen, the control point is nearly half a mile from the face, but the operator can follow on his indicator the exact position of the boxes as they travel up and down along the coal. On the coal face, guide rails are used to keep the boxes pressed tight up against the coal. These guide rails are controlled by pneumatic pushers, and it's one man's job to keep the rails pushed in at the right place. As 
the knives on the scraper boxes cut more and more deeply under the coal face, the overhanging coal parts from the roof and falls to be collected by the boxes. Behind the pusher operator come the prop setters. The roof here is so good that no bars are needed and wedge props are simply set three feet apart. After the prop setters come the drawers off. They clean up the spilled coal and then take down the back row of props as the face advances, leaving the roof to cave in behind them. Here at Pleen, 31 men have been averaging over 230 tonnes a shift, with a bigger output possible if they could get it away quickly enough. That's pretty good going, and the coal's not all small stuff either. Many times in the past have the men of the West Riding Colliery outdone their neighbours in putting on a show as well as turning out the coal. Meet Bernard Powis, Clarence Bill and Tommy Megson and manager Baster, screen hand Chick Wilshaw, fireman Jim Turner, underground worker Jack Fish, Colin Plant, Clark, and storekeeper Israel Downton. Produced by a local 18-year-old girl, Avril Panton, these men have made up their own concert party, with a difference. Their makeup is in the hands of Mrs. Butler, the local policeman's wife, once a music hall artist herself. The hall at Normanton Central Town Club is packed with an audience supporting a local charity. Storekeeper Downton takes up the baton and leads off into Delib's Coppelia. And here come the boys. I beg your pardon, G I mean boys. in fits and even the conductor beginning to break down under the strain, it's a wonder that these eight husky miners can keep straight faces. With crafty footwork like this, the men of the West Riding play to packed halls wherever they go. They keep their audiences happy and if Robert Helpman's a bit better, so what? It's all in a good cause. <laughs> 